Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we're taking a look at intake manifolds, but before we get into which is better, a single plane and a dual plane, and which single plane and which dual plane, make sure go to all the corners and do all that stuff where you like, share, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notified when I do all this kind of crazy and very cool testing. Today we're taking a look at four different intake manifolds on a 5 liter Ford. On the dual plane side we have a Performer 289 and a Performer RPM. On the single plane side we have an Edelbrock Torker 2 and an Edelbrock Victor Jr. So of those which one is the best dual plane, which one is the best single plane, and then of all four of those which one would you Okay guys, let's jump right in and take a look at two different dual plane intake manifolds and two different single plane intake manifolds on a 302 or otherwise a 5 liter Ford. And speaking of 5 liter Fords, we wanted to be able to test the merits of the intake manifolds and a stock motor obviously wasn't going to do that. Simply replacing the EFI upper and lower with a carbureted manifold isn't really going to show very much because, you know, the rest of the motor is kind of holding things back. So we wanted a good combination to really test the limits or the power potential of each combination. Obviously, in reality, on a single plane manifold, you'd build that combination different for using that manifold than you would on a dual plane. We picked something kind of in between. We built a 5 liter 302. It had four draws and four pistons and a stock crank. It was bored 40 over. It had a flat top with uh, uh, shallow valve reliefs in it. It had a set of milled 185 airflow research heads. The heads were, were milled 25 thousandths. This was 40 over, as I mentioned. And also, it seems like the, the block, that this particular block was supplied by way back when by the guys from Coast High Performance, the block had seen some machine work in its life. And so when we put this combination together with the piston and rod and crankshaft assembly, the piston was actually out of the hole by about 5,000, so it helped with our static compression. We also ran this combination with a set of 1.7 rockers in place of the normal 1.6. These were obviously roller rockers, and we would have run roller rockers even if we had we run 1.6s, but this was a little bit added a little bit lift from our camshaft. And as always, <laughs> or normally on these 5 liter motors, I ran the Extreme Energy 274 camshaft. And I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. It's the one that we always use. But like I said, this time we combined it with a little more rocker ratio. And in the case of all of these modifications, more static compression that puts it up closer to 10 to 1. So what we did was run this with a set of inch and 5 eighths long tube headers and then the various intake manifolds. And they were all equipped with a 650 carburetor. MSC distributor, obviously we optimized the timing and did jetting as necessary. And when jetting was definitely necessary when comparing the, especially when we're comparing the single planes to the dual planes, because the single planes were very similar in the jetting that they wanted. The dual planes were very similar in the jetting that they wanted, but the two were definitely dramatically different. But here's our starting point. What we did was we first equipped the motor, our test motor with a dual plane performer 289. So it's kind of low man on the totem pole, the mildest version, let's say, of a dual plane intake manifold, but still it did very well. And we dialed in our carburetor. So run with the Performer RPM, or not RPM, the Performer 289 intake manifold, our modified 302, or actually is a little bit over 307 cubic inches, produced 404 horsepower. And peak torque was up at 379, yeah, 379 foot pounds. So it did well. It's a good starting point. But let's compare that to the other dual plane that we ran. This is a Performer RPM and not even a Performer RPM air gap. So it didn't have the air flowing underneath it. And as we know, the RPM air gap is more than just the airspace underneath. The internals of the manifold, I'm told, are also different. So the RPM air gap manifold is supposed to be a different manifold than the RPM. But we ran your standard RPM. And here's what happened when we ran that combination. You can see the RPM definitely made more power. Peak power was up to 429 horsepower from 404. So it added another 25 horsepower. Most of the gains coming out at the top of the rev range. Peak torque was also up from just under 380 foot pounds to 390 foot pounds. And it happened at 100 RPM earlier on the RPM intake manifold. The jetting was very, very comparable on these. And all of these motors were run with 35 degrees of total time, which seemed to be what they wanted. So now that we've taken a look at our dual planes, let's check out a comparison between our single planes. And then we can kind of mix and match the two. 
Okay, guys, now that we've taken a look at the comparison between our dual plane intake manifolds, the Performer 289 and the Performer RPM, let's take a look at our single plane manifolds and the two that we compared, Edelbrock Torker 2 versus the Edelbrock Victor Jr. I think Victor Jr. kind of gets the nod, and we'll see why here. It seems to be more popular. The Torker 2, less common. A lot of times, guys, you use those for applications where hood clearance might be a little bit of an issue, but we'll show you. And then I'll finish off by comparing the single planes and dual planes. You can kind of decide which one you'd rather have maybe for a street application. But this is was our Edelbrock Torker 2 intake manifold. Same combination other than changing the manifold. We did obviously adjust the jetting because it's a single plane manifold compared to the dual plane stuff. And run with the Torker 2, we got 424 horsepower and 385 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we installed the Edelbrock Victor Jr. You can see that the Edelbrock Victor Jr. made more power than the Torker 2 basically all the way through the RPM range, although not by a lot. Um, we're looking in the middle here, you know, gains of five or six foot-pounds. The gains were even higher as we got out at the top of the rev range. 424 versus 36, so 12 horsepower, you know, 12 to 13 horsepower out here at the top. So, and this kind of shows us why the Victor Jr. is the more popular, really, of the two intake manifolds, because it does everything, essentially, that the Torker 2 does. It just seems to do it better. And if we had a combination with even more camshaft and we were running more RPM, the Edelbrock Victor Jr. would really kind of come into its own because I think it's a superior uh, single plane intake manifold compared to the Torker 2 and then maybe that's why it's not quite as popular. Now let's take a look and see what happens and compare the the dual planes to the single planes and figure out which one you guys would want to run on your street strip motor. Okay guys we compared our single planes, we've compared our dual planes, now we have to compare them to each other and we'll take a look and see how they compare on your typical kind of you know, hot little street strip small block Ford. So this is our Torker 2, our single plane Torker 2, and here's how it compares to the Performer 289 dual plane. So the dual plane, as we have come to expect, made more power up down low and in the middle part of the curve up to 46 or 4700 RPM. And then the single plane made more power after that all the way out past 6000 RPM. This is kind of typical of single plane, dual plane stuff. Usually there's a crossover between the two where the single plane might start making more power. Below that, the dual plane makes more power. Where that crossover happens is dependent on a lot of things. It depends on the motor that you're testing it on, how much camshaft it has, and where it kind of wants to rev, and then also the displacement and the particular intake manifolds that you're looking at. So we're going to compare the... Uh, Torker 2 now to the R to the Performer RPM. You can see that there's even less of a trade-off between the two on the RPM versus the Torker 2. Basically, the RPM does everything that the Torker 2 does, doesn't lose anything at the top except maybe out past 6100 RPM, but basically it's as good or better through all of the rest of the curve. So if you were choosing an intake manifold for this combination, for something that had this kind of cam and was making this kind of power in this RPM range, it would be really hard to beat an RPM uh, or, or an RPM air gap. Certainly the Torker 2 is not going to be a consideration once you look at a curve like this and go, hey, look, I can have everything that I have out of the top in terms of top, top end. But here in the 41 and 4200 RPM, 344 or 346 versus 377. Plus I can have an additional 30 foot pounds of torque in an area where you're actually more likely to use it. So in this case, dual plane, definitely way to go. Let's take a look at maybe our RPM air gap or RPM versus the Victor Jr. Maybe the two best, the best single plane versus the best dual plane. Go ahead and get rid of our preferences here. Get rid of our so this is our RPM, and this is our Victor Jr. And again, like we saw with the, the Performer 289 versus the Torker 2, we do have a crossover between the single plane and the dual plane, between the RPM and the Victor Jr. The RPM makes more power down low, and in this case, the crossover point is 
5200 rpm below that the dual plane definitely better again even in the 4000 to 4200 rpm range we have 351 versus 377 so you know 25 or 26 additional foot pounds of torque offered by the dual plane pretty typical of that combination the single plane did the victor jr did make more peak power than the dual plane did we're looking at a difference of 436 versus 428 or 29 so seven horsepower on the top so again it all comes down to usually the same thing on a single plane dual plane comparison where do you want your power production and where is that power more valuable yes the single plane makes more power on the top but through a lot of the curve the dual plane is better now you get to decide remember if you're older please make sure to like share subscribe ring the bell do all that stuff and i'll keep testing